You're listening to Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick in association with Wexford Insurances. Challenge us at Wexford Insurances, 0818 31 30 30. My first guest this morning is legendary comedian Brendan Grace. Brendan, you might start by telling me how you initially became involved in the comedy business. I think um, I started off as a singer and, and people used to laugh. So, <laughs> so I figured that was the best way to go, was to start telling jokes. <laughs> no, but no, I used to... Uh, I, I suppose when you're a poor kid, you know, a, a poor kid, like back in the, in the late 60s, I was... And uh, you think of ways that you can make a few bob. And the comedy just wasn't... Uh, you had to be established. You had to be Jimmy O'Dea then. or You had to be... I mean, I was lucky that I learned from Jimmy O'Dea and Chris Casey and all the great comedy acts. But um, hunger has got me into it. Now, hunger got you into it. What established you in it all? Um, I suppose um, television. I got a bit of television from the word go. Um, I became um, quite well known on television for the character Butler. And now it ends up that Butler is going to hopefully earn my living now when I retire. I want to speak to you in more detail about Butler and the cartoon that we're going to see on our TV screen shortly. But before we do, you're celebrating 40 years in the business. Yeah. Uh, tell me, what has the secret to that success been? Um, I don't really know what the secret of it is, but... It's mainly because I, I really I've um, I've never changed um, my format over the years. I've always done comedy that's funny, that uh, it comes in the format of jokes. And uh, my dad was a funny person, even though he wasn't uh, involved in the business. And my mum was was one of the milers from Wexford, who are still here. You know, her her dad was Hardy Mailer. Uh, Miller or Myler, and um, and they're still in business in the fish business in Wexford. So, they, uh, they they were lovely parents to have, but we were poor, ish, and I went to work when I was uh, twelve and a half. Tell me about the breakthrough moment. Was there any along the way in your own career? Yeah, well, there was a few breakthroughs. Um, I was lucky enough to get a television show um, called the Brendan Gray Show on television in the late 70s. And I mean, that to be able to get a show on national television. And then I had several late, late shows. Uh, Gay Bourne was always good to me. And um, I suppose the break, there were several breakthroughs. Perhaps the most noted was my meeting with Frank Sinatra and Sammy Davis and Liza Minnelli back in 1989. I'm sure people would be interested in finding out how that came about. I was. Uh, they came to Ireland on the last leg of their tour. And it was a tour called The Ultimate Event. And Dean Martin was supposed to be on it. And he became ill, I believe. And Liza Minnelli came with Sinatra and Sammy Davis. And I admired Sammy Davis. I was never a great fan of Frank Sinatra. And I was walking into the hotel they were staying in, in the hope that I might get to see them, even over somebody's shoulder. Hmm. And as I walked into the hotel, Oliver Barry, the promoter, was coming out. And Oliver said, the right man in the right place. And Oliver gave me the gig to entertain them because it was the last leg of their world tour. And they were on the way back to America. And it was the manager's birthday. And Sinatra wanted to have a party for, for the for the manager, and I got the job um, entertaining at the party, and, I mean, it, as a result of making them laugh, and Sammy Davis fell, I mean, they, they really, really laughed because of the approach I took, which was quite simple. It was a joke. Tell me this, from an international perspective, did that catapult you into the national market? Yeah, well, it's international. It's international because it's America. Um, and I moved to America shortly afterwards. They wanted me to move straight away, but uh, I got uh, I got an awful lot of connections through the Sinatra connection and Sammy Davis, and and then they died. They died shortly afterwards. I'm sure people will be wondering, where do you source your material from? Well, the material comes from things, very simple things that happen, 
But my road manager is uh, Brian, my tour manager and my manager, my everything. Uh, Brian comes up with stuff that he says, but it's observational material and it's jokes. And that's, that's the basic jokes. Like, did you hear the one about the fella? It's that kind of joke. Before you got involved in show business, I did hear a rumour that you had a short stint in sales. Is there any truth to that? Well, that was at a time to time when I did a bit of a stutter. And I decided to sell Bibles. And by selling Bibles, I became very rich. And I was at the, at, at the, the, the door of a pers- per- person's house. And the person inside in the house would say, they'd say, why are you here? And I'd say, because I'm s- 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 selling b- 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 Bibles. And I have this b- b- Bible here, here, here in my hand. So would you like to buy it? Or, 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 or will I... R- r- Read it, gee. <laughs> <laughs> so that was your sales career. So from there you went into show business. Over the years you've had great success in it. Uh, the recession, has that had any impact on the business itself for you? Um, well, the recession has had an impact, of course, on everybody. The one thing it's done for me is it has pointed out, you know, the necessity for comedy in one's life. And um, I find that if people are depressed and if people are feeling down, they will turn to humour. And I think they should turn to humour. And as a result of it now, it's, um, it has been a tremendous um, push, you know, in general to people. It's a business that does well in a recession, comedy. I could understand, you know, with the, the mood out there being somewhat... Dormant. I could understand somebody looking for a laugh. Well, when you go back, I mean, the big recession before this, I actually opened my show as if it's going to be a speech. But I talk about the recession in the 1920s, the Wall Street crash. And I mean, that, that was a dreadful, dreadful, dreadful recession. And now, almost 100 years later, you know, it's, we're into this world recession. But we survived the last one, and there's no reason why we can't survive this one. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. It's a cycle we're going through, and like every other cycle, we'll come back out of it. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering, you know, over the years, I've said you've had great success in the show business area. Yeah. Uh, Investment-wise, have you made many, and have they been good or bad? Well, uh, the investment, my main investment, and it goes back to your question about why has the comedy been such a success. My successful has been... Unlike a lot of people who think that, that investment is money and that material things, I've invested myself in my family and in being uh, a good father. A good, we, we have a great family situation and naturally, yes, I have made investments in property and it has gone by the board because of the recession. But the main thing is to have an investment, is to believe in yourself. And my investment is the ongoing effect of what I do for a living nowadays. And if you had to go back and do it all over again for the last 40 years, yeah. is there anything you'd do differently? I would do exactly what I've done. That's the only thing I can say. Because, I mean, there have been ups and downs, and I can't really remember the downs in my career, but there have been times that the, the career, you'd be wondering, is the career going to last? And then you get breaks like the Sinatra break, and then I had hit records like the Combine Harvester. That was way back in the 70s. Brendan, the comedy business, like many others, has changed over the years. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on the nature of these changes. Well, I'm glad you said the word business, because comedy is a business. And being funny, you know, it's not meant to be a business, but it is. It's given me my my living uh, for 40 odd years. It's actually 45 years, to be honest. But the thing about it is that it has changed because a lot of people who are in comedy nowadays are in it by default. They don't dress for the stage, which I still do. I still wear a tuxedo. They don't bow at the end. They don't say good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And they don't tell jokes. 
So they're doing comedy. A lot of people are doing comedy by default. I don't know what people, some people see. And I do agree that it's a hard medium. And that they're appealing to newer people. Uh, but some of the f- uh, comedy successes, you know, that have gone on are the likes of Tommy Tiernan and Brendan O'Carroll. Look at Brendan O'Carroll. Mm. I mean, Brendan was struggling for many, many years. He used to work with me. Maybe that's why he, <laughs> that's why he struggled. <laughs> but Brendan now has uh, Mrs. Brown's boys. Brendan made it as a woman. <laughs> when you think about it, <laughs> Brendan, Brendan O'Carroll is Mrs. Brown. He's, re- he's an author. He's a, uh, he's a playwright. He's fantastic, and it's it's going to go worldwide. Has comedy turned into shock treatment today? Yes, it has. And I think people who go along... See, I have to look the part. I have a roadie, I have lights, I have sound. I am, that's an investment I made in my business. All my equipment, all the people. There's eight people involved in the Brendan Gray Show. There's eight people travel between the, the support act, the roadies my tour manager, my manager, my booking manager, and myself and my wife travel now. It's lovely for us because, you know, she's, she's, my, she's my driver. It's great. <laughs> for those listening to this morning show that might be considering a career in show business or even, more importantly, a career in comedy, what yeah. advice would you give them? Well, I give the same advice as I did years ago, only it was more pertinent years ago because um, I used to say to people, who'd say, you'd say, I'd like to get into comedy. And I'd say, well, be firm about what you do. Rehearse and enter talent competitions. Nowadays, the television is full of reality shows. And comedy is a different uh, medium, I think. And uh, I think today, if, if you have a comedy to offer, look, believe in it and go on television and try and do it. What are your thoughts on these reality TV shows? Well, reality television now is, uh, it's all, it's all to do with things we do as people. I mean, there was somebody writing a comedy show, probably about uh, a reality show about you, what you do. And uh, it's, it's certainly given the world a greater scope. And, and the talent shows... Like the likes of the talent shows and the texting, you text in the answer to a quiz or whatever. I think it's, I, I just think it's the world we live in today. Things are changing quick. As I said, look, you know, the business is show business. I'm wondering from a general perspective, though, who do you admire in business in Ireland? In, uh, in business, well, a person I, I admire, I'll give you an example. Michael O'Leary. Michael O'Leary, you're right there. Um, not everybody agrees with him. And I would know myself that it's the same with what I do. I don't expect everybody to enjoy my comedy. Jesus Christ was a person who came amongst us on earth. That we, you know, the world doesn't always agree with what Jesus Christ did. So you must learn as you go along that not everything you do will please you. But Michael O'Leary is a one-man machine with, that gets publicity for Ryanair. Michael O'Leary only has to make an announcement that he's going to put a pay toilet on an airplane or he's going to have people standing strapped to the walls of the airplane. He has no intention of doing that, <laughs> but he will generate probably a million pounds worth of publicity in a weekend, free. I want to focus on your, the cartoon. Butler, the character we all know, the 45-year-old schoolboy at this stage, it's going to be on our screen shortly as a cartoon. Tell me how that came about, firstly. Well, I always felt that Butler, you know, was an icon. Uh, I mean, I know it sounds big-headed of me to say it, but I have to be honest, he's bigger than I am. And I've, I've tried to figure, how can Butler remain with people for many years to come, long after I'm not able to do this? And I came up with the idea of a cartoon. And then I put the idea to my distributors in Dublin, which are Bomix. And Bomix went to TV3. And TV3 were interested. And then we got a cartoon maker in Ireland. The, the entire project, by the way, is Irish. 
And Butler now is a cartoon, he's a cartoon character after he goes on there in November with no beard. He's only a kid. He's the kid that he was meant to be mm. and his characters that, that are in it. Um, and I I felt that investing in Butler, I put money into it. We've all put money to this. And we felt that by doing so, it can be, if, if it does go uh, outside of Ireland, which we believe it will, it can go to any language because it's a cartoon. Mm. And a cartoon will stand up to Japanese, Chinese. I mean, the greatest export, the greatest thing in the world now is China and Russia. And I mean, Butler speaks Russian, he speaks Chinese, he speaks Japanese. And I think, uh, I think it, was, it was a good investment and I believe it was the place for him to be. Has it taken up much of your time, script writing for it? Yes, it has, but there, there, is, there are script writers who are Irish and um, we may have to get international script writers when it goes to, uh, to the international scene, but we'll cross that bridge when it comes. But for now, like the bridge outside the, uh, in Wexford here, that beautiful bridge, I remember when that was built, by the way. I'm old enough to remember when that bridge was built. But I think it was built back in the 50s or somewhere. But uh, like that bridge, I believe that Butler will go on and on. So that's the future for Brendan Grace, you know, commercialising Butler on her TV screens. Yeah, well, I invented Butler, and now, 40-odd years later, Butler is going to be my pension, because he's only a young boy. Rui! Butler <laughs> talks like that, and I do the voice for him, by the way. So there's nobody doing Butler except me. So I can, I can do the voice of Butler. Brendan, that's us nearly out of time, but I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for coming on the show this morning. Pleasure. It's been inspirational speaking to you, and I wish you continued success. Well, thank you very much, and I'm delighted to be on the uh, South East Radio in Wexford, because one of my great, another great thing here in Wexford was my, my good buddy Eddie Sweeney. He was my best friend, and Eddie passed away a couple of years ago. And then my other good buddy, uh, Morris McCarthy. And it's funny, when I was coming over to the studio here this morning, there was a crowd of people just up beside the, the Commodore John Barry Monument and there was a guy playing guitar and I recognised his voice and it was Morris Mulcahy and I said, my God, so now Morris is busking and as I got a little bit closer to the statue I realised it was Morris and there he was throwing money at the people <laughs> so they'd listen to him <laughs> So come to the Utah <laughs> You're listening to Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick in association with Wexford Insurances. Think Wexford Insurances for your business insurance.